favourite track and field athlete of all time, I think, would probably be Lassie Viren because he was the first person that inspired me to take part in athletics. I was 12, 13, 14 when he was he won his first two Olympic gold medals in 1972, and then he went on to win two more gold medals in 1976, four years later. So he was the big star of distance running when I was just thinking about becoming um, a runner, joining an athletic club. So he had a, a big impact on my career, I think. My favourite moment from watching athletics has been very recently, actually, was at the Olympic Games in, in London. Um, I'm very lucky now because I commentate, I sit in a good seat and I get to watch a lot of the best athletics. But as a, as a almost unique moment, Mo Farah winning his second gold medal in the 5,000 metres in a stadium with 80,000 pretty much British fans going crazy. The noise was incredible. And it was also a great race. You know, with 200 metres to go, there was probably four or five people could win the race. So it was a great race to watch, to commentate on, but to actually be there when, you know, athletics has these great moments over the years. And, you know, Usain Bolt's provided pl plenty and there's been so many great historical moments. But for, for Great Britain, for our country and the Olympics in our country at that time, that was the best. My own favourite performance was probably actually winning the World Championships in 1983. It's not the fastest race, not a world record or anything, but it was the first ever World Championships for athletics. Uh, so it was a big occasion, obviously. And as a 1500 metre runner, it's not always about running fast, it's about being smart. And often championship races are tactical. And it was one of those races that was almost perfect from a planning point of view. Um, I was up against Saida Wieter and Steve Scott and Steve Orvet, and you know, it was a great field. And when you do a performance where you do everything you want to do, and it, it, it works out exactly how you thought and you planned it, um, obviously wanting to win, but the tactics were so important that day. I had lots of injuries the last three, four years of my career, and I still felt as though there was more I wanted to do, but my body, my legs in particular, um, were constantly causing problems. And I just woke up one day and knew that the motivation wasn't there, and that was the key. Once I knew I wasn't as motivated, then I decided to stop. And, um, but it is hard because it's been your whole life. You know, I was 34, uh, you're still young, really. So it's quite a frightening, decision to make because you don't always know what's going to come next, what will you do afterwards. So it's a, it's, it's a really tough decision. But funnily enough, once I made it, I felt a lot better um, and was able then to start thinking about the rest of my life and, and look back and you know, enjoy what, what I did in my career. Well, now I have a, a really uh, busy and, and you know, fun uh, life, I guess. Um, as far as athletics is concerned, the main thing I do is I, I commentate for the, for the BBC at all of our major events and Diamond Leagues and follow athletics around the world, which is great. I coach, I coach one of our top 1500 meter runners, a girl called Laura Waitman, who made the Olympic final in 2012. She's a young athlete improving, so that's great fun. Um, I have a charity. I have an events company, which we organize a couple of running events. I'm chancellor of the university in the city where, where I come from in Sunderland. So a lot of things uh, keep, keeps me nice and busy. Mm -hmm.